going to show you how to make fish cakes. This is a really good recipe to build in lots of skills for your NEA2. If you're dealing with raw fish, here I have got 450 grams of, I've got 350 grams of potato boiled. I'm going to zest a lemon. Then I have some chives, parsley and peppercorns. I'm going to poach my fish first in the frying pan. I'm going to put 150 ml of milk and 150 ml of water. You could put bay leaves in this, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to put some parsley and some peppercorns. You could put some peel of the lemon in. Then I'm just going to place my fish in the pan, pop the lid on and bring it to the boil to poach. When the milk starts to boil, it can really puff up in size and spill over the pan. So you may want to remove your lid at this point. Can you see that the fish is going white? You just need to ensure that it's cooked in the center. You could then just put the lid back on, turn the heat off and let it poach through. Roughly chop it first and then as it gets finer, you can keep dragging it back with a knife and cut through all of the parsley. You want this to be even. See I've got large bits, so just keep going back over it. To zest the lemon, wash the lemon first to remove any wax and use the fine side of the grater. It's very, very important that you don't zest too deep. You literally just want to take off the very outer yellow part of the flesh. This is the part that has the essential oils in. If you go further down to the white, this will produce a very bitter flavour. You do not want this. So just zest, literally taking the very outer layer off that contains the essential oils. There, I've just removed the zest from the lemon. For the potatoes, it is essential that you let them drain for at least five minutes. I see so many people use their potatoes very quickly after they've been cooked and then the fish cakes become too wet. See, mine have drained for a good 10 minutes and some water has still come out. Dispose of the water. I am then going to mash my potato. Note that I cooked my potato in small chunks, all similar sizes so they cook through evenly. This is a ricer. You could use a potato masher, but the ricer will produce a much finer potato. Put the potato in. and squeeze the potato through. Here is my potato finely mashed. The fish is cooked and all of the flesh has turned white. Carefully with a slotted spoon or a fish slice, lift the fish and you see how flaky it has become. And place the fish onto some kitchen towel. Again, it is very important to let the fish drain and so that all the excess moisture goes. There's my fish nicely flaked. Allow it to cool so that you don't burn your hands when you shape it at the next stage. I shall now make the fish cakes. So in here is my mashed potato. I'm just going to season it well with some salt. I have a little bit of pepper. Be careful not to end the season your food. It's a mistake a lot of people make. Add my lemon zest, my parsley and chives and mix until all evenly distributed. Then add my flaked fish. You could at this stage add a spoonful of mayonnaise or tartar sauce. Combine the ingredients together. You do not want your mixture too sloppy or the fish cakes won't hold their shape. 
turn your fish cake mixture back on to a board and divide it into four. Here I have a bowl of seasoned plain flour, beaten egg and some breadcrumbs. I made these breadcrumbs by toasting some white bread and blitzing them in my Nutribullet. I then take each segment of fish cake mixture. You could weigh them if you wanted to be really precise to make sure that they were all equal and shape them into a ball. Once they are in a ball, you then just press them down and turn, press and turn until they make a fish cake shape. Take my fish cake with my dry hand, coat it all in the flour, all the sides as well, roll it around, shake off any excess, into the egg with my wet hand, coat all of it with the egg, the egg helps to bind the breadcrumbs. Drop it into the breadcrumbs with the dry hand. Put the breadcrumbs over the top. Make sure it's coated on the sides. And onto a baking tray, preferably with some parchment underneath. There's my four fish cakes coated. Discard any leftover flour, egg or breadcrumbs as this would be contaminated with the fish. Store in a fridge at three to five degrees until you need them. To make a homemade tartar sauce, I'm going to use some mayonnaise, parsley, capers, cornichons, or you could use a gherkin, and the juice from the lemon that I zested. I'm going to finely chop the parsley rough and roughly chop these two. With your roughly chopped ingredients, I have some, I have about two tablespoons of mayonnaise in the bowl. I'm going to start off by putting about a teaspoon of lemon juice in. And then I will just add my parsley, my capers and my cornichon. Just stir. Season. And very, very important, you need to taste. But remember, do not put your finger back into the bowl. Just needs a little bit more lemon juice. Of course you could use dry parsley and also omit either the capers or the cornichons if you don't have them. And there's your tartar sauce. Ready to eat your fish cakes. Just preheat some oil, swirl it around the pan. I've also preheated my oven at 180 so that I can just sear them on each edge and then place them in the oven to heat through. Just using a fish slice, after a couple of minutes, just flip the fish cakes over. A common mistake is to flip them too soon and then they will fall apart. So give them about two minutes each side. Just pop them then on a baking tray and place them in a fan assisted oven on about 180 for about 15 minutes so that they just heat through.